Brendan, thank you. And of course, we have Ronnie Richter, who's been helping us throughout this process, understanding what's happening in that Colleton County courtroom. Ronnie Richter of the Bland Richter Law Firm. Ronnie, certainly let's start with what we were surprised by. A lot of people that Alec Murdoch did in fact take that stand today. You thought he would not. Was he a credible, compelling witness? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think he was not going to testify. I knew that he was not going to. So Riley Benson was right. Ronnie Richter was wrong. Okay. W was he compelling? Uh, let's, let's start with the direct examination. It should be good. Right? These are your lawyers asking you rehearsed questions. And for the most part, they're softballs, right? So you should know the questions. You should know the answers. They would have gone over this dozens of times. So did he reach that emotional high point? Sure, I, I think that he did. But what we're seeing now in the, in the cross-examination is the reason why you do not do this, especially for a guy like Alec Murdoch, because you're turning this complex case into a one-issue case. And the only issue now is, do we believe him? Let's start with what the defense presented in terms of him being a compelling, credible witness. What were some of the high points for the defense? Re really, the high point was him relaying his relationship with Maggie and his relationship with Paul. Right. So tell me about Maggie. Tell me about Paul. The heartstring kind of questions. But, but I got to tell you, even in watching that, the the camera kept panning to the to the audience. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see anybody moved. Even his own family members. I'm watching Buster. There are no tears in the audience. So I don't know if the jury's receiving it the same way that they were, but it was definitely impactful. But I didn't see the impact on those watching in the courtroom. One of the things that I think a lot of people, and certainly the state talked about this, was his use of um, terms of infection, endearment, nicknames, uh, mags, and, and pawpaw, something we had not heard anywhere else right. over the past 20 months or so. Yeah, and he really leaned into that hard, too, during his direct examination. And Creighton Waters, within minutes on the cross, pointed out the inconsistency. You never said that when you were talking to investigators. So. Not one time through the investigative process did you use a nickname like Pawpaw or Mags, but obviously it's a technique trying to endear himself to the jury. One of the things we heard from Alec Murdoch as soon as he got on the stand was he admitted that he lied. He talked about, you know, his voice being heard at the kennels. He admitted that to the jury, but he said he did not and would not ever hurt his family. There was no information to suggest him being violent toward his family. So did that perhaps endear him with this jury of his peers, people who know him and knew about his reputation? I No. No. And, and I say no because he's, he's admitting now that he lied. That this investigation has been going on for almost two years. He went through multiple investigative interviews. He had lots of opportunities to say what the truth was. But he's only saying it now when his neck is on the line. And, and this is kind of a, an, a, an M.O. for Alex Murnau. When the news gets tight, when the corner gets tight, that's when he changes the story. That's when he capitulates and tells you the, the truth, whatever that might be. I think anyone watching what happened on that stand today and listening to the testimony, and it certainly was riveting, that they listened to him admit to all of these financial crimes. He never denied any of it. He apologized. He admitted to it. He said he was remorseful. But what we have not seen or heard from the state is any direct connection to the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch. All right. Well, well, two things about that. Yes, he's admitting the financial crimes now. All right. But there's 90 indictments for all 90 of those indictments. He's pled not guilty today. His, his official statement on those charges is not guilty. So is this his guilty plea on all 90 of those offenses? That's going to come out in the cross-examination. Expect Creighton to hit him with that. Russell Lafitte, his good friend, the banker, he gave this great, compelling account. Russell did nothing wrong. That was all me. Mm -hmm. He sat by and watched his friend get convicted in federal court. He could have gone to that court and testified on his behalf, and he didn't do it. He's the worst coward there is, and he's a cunning liar. Okay, so this is what's going to come out in the cross-examination. This is why you don't put the man on the stand. And again, they are converting a very complicated case into a one-issue case. Because if he's lying then, how do we know he's not lying now? If the state had physical, substantial, significant, compelling evidence against Alec Murdoch, would we not have seen that when they started the cross-examination? I think we've seen all they have in, in terms of forensics. And that's why I think you don't put them on the stand. I think 
the holes in the motive case, the holes in the forensic case, the rush to judgment by the investigating authorities. That's all he needed, right? The hubris that would cause this man to think, if I get on the stand and I say it, people will believe it, is, is what may talk his way into jail. One of the other things that we heard, and this might be a technique of some kind, him asking or recasting the question, we hear uh, the state ask a question, then he asked the same question back a lot of times. Yeah, I gotta tell you, his lawyers at the, at the bench are dying right now because on cross-examination, the number one rule is answer the question first. All right, so on cross, you always ask a question that demands a yes or no answer. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that the light was red? Mm -hmm. right, so what you expect from the witness is, I'm gonna get an answer to that question. Now, if the answer requires explanation, then you explain. The juries tire quickly of a witness like Alex who cannot or will not answer that direct question, and so his technique to buy time is to constantly recast that question. So that's that what question. you think he's doing, trying to buy time with an answer? Absolutely, and I think that's what the jury's perceiving, and that's why credibility becomes the single issue in the case. All right. Ronnie Richter, thank you so much for your time. Of course, we look forward to speaking with you again. And of course,